Hi everyone. Today let's talk limit switches. Um, it's a lot of a uh, lot of confusion, a lot of misunderstanding or not understanding at all of what limit switches are for and how it affects you and how it protects you um, and how it can frustrate you sometimes also. So we're going to just briefly go over what the limit switches are for, um, what you can use them for and how you recover from if you do hit a limit switch. So to start with, um, you know, I'm going to use my mandrel here. The mandrel has um, limit switches on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z. And it has a control box. And then the silver back, which I'm going to show you right now. So the silver back has the same thing. If you notice, uh, here you've got your limit switches top and bottom on your Z. You've got limit switches here for your X axis. And then you also have limit switches here for your uh, Y axis. So it's good that they have them and I'll show you why. So it doesn't really matter what machine I'm on. If it has limit switches, they're all gonna do the same thing. So um, the 3018 does not have limit switches, but the Silverback does, the Mandrill does. The new 6550 will have two limit switches for homing, and I'm going to show you what they're for. So, let's go. <clears throat> Alright, so, what we got is, basically, the limit switch is just this. It's a simple switch that um, engage and disengage, and they are located here, here, now on this machine, there's one here, there's one back here, there's one here, and there's one over here. They may look like this, they may look like this, and these particular ones here actually look just like this. And so basically all they are is exactly what they sound like, limit switches. They tell the software what the limits are of your machine. And so, um, you know, pretty simple explanation would be this, obviously this, um, the um, spindle here cannot come further out of here because clearly there's a frame here. So you want something to tell the software, oh hey, it can't go no more. And that's why they put switches. If you don't have the limit switches, if you've seen the other machines or if you had a 3018, You'll hear the grinding, it'll go too far, it'll start grinding. You'll either tear up the motor or you'll mess up the gears or whatever have you. And so that's the purpose of the limit switches is to limit the travel one way or another, X, Y, or Z. So they're actually really handy. You know, um, the main thing that most people use the limit switches for is home in the machine. So how does your machine know to go back to the very same homing spot every time. When you turn your machine on, you have like one zero point every time. How does it know that? It knows that because of the limit switches. So, for example, I'm going to go ahead and tell my machine to home. And it doesn't matter what software I'm using because, um, like I said, limit switches are all the same. So it just tested my, it just checked my Z. It stopped it when it hit the, um, switch it tested my X it stopped it when it hit the switch and now it's moving the Y as you can see until it hits the back switch here and then it's going to zone them in and just stop okay that's the Z I mean that's the zero every time and um, I'm going to take a picture here I'm going to display it on the screen for you of this is a great example of the X hitting the limit switch and um, basically it goes on to the switch. How it works is, and this is all really important, um, it hits on the switch and then it comes off the switch and um, what it does is then it goes on again until it just clicks it and then it comes off and what basically it's doing is it's measuring the distance so that it just comes off the switch and it's like barely touching it and that's considered your zero where the um, switch is not pressed. It's, it's not pressed at all. So that's where you want it at right there. So with that being said, none of the switches are being pressed currently because like I said it hit them 
and then it came off of them. So that's where it's at. Now, that's how you home your machine, and that's what most people use the limit switches for, is for homing. I know personally that's what I use them for most of the time. Um, but um, where this can become a pain and you're not and you may not be familiar with is when you're moving your machine or carving your machine or doing whatever and if you hit a limit switch other than homing you hit a limit switch you're just gonna have a headache your machine's gonna stop working and um, you have to reset it you've got to reset your cut or you've got to start over or you've got to recenter where your piece was is kind of a real pain in the butt so that's the whole point of doing limit switch so so for example I'm going to move I'm going to just jog my controller and again it doesn't really matter what software I'm using because if you're using easel and, and or carveco or candle or UGS or whatever it doesn't matter you move your machine you move your machine hit limit switch hit limit switch it's all the same so I'm just going to move mine to the right I'm going to move it a couple times and then, um, you know, let's say I'm coming over here and I'm, I'm trying to check out where I'm going. And, you know, I'm looking here, the bit's coming down, I'm moving it over and, and I go again and I keep going and keep going and boom, it hits the limit switch right there. So what happens now is my machine goes into an error state and or alarm state. So now it's not going to move because it's in an alarm state. So on your software, you should see the red thing come up saying that, like an alarm or something like that. And um, you'll, and you obviously you'll notice your machine has stopped. So what this did, this protected me from going too far and then making this grind and the, you know, the motor still trying to you know, pull through and all that good stuff. So um, here's the problem with this is, so now, you have to soft reset it or reset it and then unlock it. So in this case, um, if you have a mandrel, a silverback, um, some of the other ones, depending on the machine you have, uh, you're going to need to push the reset. And then on your screen where you have, um, like I said, every software is different. Easel, let's just say Easel, for example, up at the top right there where you had the control to job should now be a white area and just say unlock and you're going to need to click unlock and when you do that um, let me do mine here real quick okay so see I just had to reset mine and go through and actually close my software and reopen it that's why you don't want to hit the limit switches um, when you're cutting and you hit the limit switch don't panic and start you know calling support and saying this is the problem when that's the problem kind of take kind of pay attention to where it was at and then it stopped it it's a very it's, it's a pain so now that I've moved mine around and hit the limit switch, if I was trying to adjust mine, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to reset it. So like I was saying, you have to push your reset and then up on the top there, it may say unlock and then you just have to click unlock on your machine. So now you're no longer in the alarm state. So up top there or wherever at, you should see the job commands come up or the alarm go away. So there's one more little catch to this. So, it's, it's, uh, it's a gerbil, I don't know if you call it a gerbil bug issue, whatever you want to call it, I'm really not sure, but it's kind of a pain. When this right now, remember it moved over and it hit the limit switch. And this is really, really important moving forward for, for you and whoever's un, not trying to understand these. So, right now the limit switch is pressed, and that's where it was, and that's where it cut off, and that's where it protected your machine from being damaged. Well, now that I've reset it, and now that I've unlocked it, I'm ready to go. However, remember, it's on the limit switch still. So as soon as I move it off, it's going to kick back into an alarm state again. Of course, I don't want it to do that. I hate it. Um, it's, a, it's a gerbil thing. I don't, it's, it has nothing to do with our machine specifically. Um, it's just uh, the nature of the beast with the gerbil. Maybe it's something that, uh, you know, the uh, open forums or open, uh, open source software will address one day. But... Simply enough, just know when you hit the limit switch, you're going to do this twice. So I'm going to move mine off now. I'm going to start jogging it back to the left, or even if I just choose home, it doesn't matter. As soon as you move it off, it immediately went into alarm state. Mine moved just a little bit and went into alarm state, and all i got to simply do is just do the same thing. Reset, 
and then choose unlock, like you would choose it up there, and then you now should have full control of your machine again. So, like I said, remember, if you're, if you're moving a machine, and you know, someone says, oh, just hit reset and unlock, and you do, and it doesn't work, it's because you probably have to do it twice, or probably you did not do it twice. Unfortunately, you're, we all have to do it that way. It's, it's a pain. But that's how it works, and that protected me from, or protected my machine from just being damaged because I went too far. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and home my machine again. And um, what it's going to do is it's going to go up here and find the Z point, And now it's going to move this, or it's going to move the Y, and it's going to move the X. The Y is already there. It's already hit the switch, so it's waiting. The Z is done. It's waiting. And now once the X moves over enough, it's going to hit the limit switch. Then they're all going to, all three axes are going to pull off just enough right where you want it. Clicked in. And pulled them off. So now I am perfectly homed again, which is great, and that's what the limit switches are really for. I know the limit switches can be a pain um, if you hit one, but um, I mean, that's just kind of the thing. You just got to, you know, when you when you measure your board, make sure you don't go over too far. One thing I personally like to do is I'll show you what I do is on some of my things here. I'll move this spindle over. This here, for example, here's a great example. I don't have a, a pencil other than my pointer. If you really wanted to, you could move your spindle down and put a mark on your um, on your bed. Same thing with the mark here on the bed, which this one happens to be right on it. And then you can move this all the way over till you just do not hit the limit switch. And in an easy way, honestly, if, if you turn your machine off, power it off, you then can move this by hand. If, move, if you want to, move it all the way over and um, do that. So the, the point is, is don't put a larger material than your limit switch is on here because you're going to hit that limit switch and it's going to be a pain. Move this over. So Mayan, and you can't see it, I'm going to take a picture of it and I'm going to display it on the screen for you. Right there, take a picture of this. So that is just hitting the limit switch right there. So in this, in this instance, I would maybe lower my spindle down and put a marker on my bed with just a Sharpie or something like that. Knowing that if my bit goes past this point, I'm going to hit that limit switch. So you, you need to know the boundaries of your machine and where it can go, can't go, and so forth. Um, you know, sometimes if you're cutting, you need to be aware of them um, because you'll be cutting, 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 and you accidentally hit limit switch or whatever. I know uh, Jeremy, he was uh, doing a 3D cut, and I believe he was quite a few hours into doing it with a video, and he had to shop back, and he had to, you know, was doing the video took the shop vac and ran the shop vac inside on the silver back and hit that limit switch with the shop vac by accident and as soon as that stopped it's like what do you do other than throw your hands in the air and, and, and scream uh, what do you do you don't do nothing you can do but reset the whole thing and start over or you know if you have uh, higher techniques you know start over where you left off if you can but most of the time you can't start right where you left off, unfortunately. Um, so you have to start over from scratch or, or whatever you want to do it. But um, if you didn't move your piece and you honed it right here and that's where you had it or you knew where you started the actual um, um, you know, distance X and Y, then you could probably start back over. But anyway, so that's the... The principle of the limit switches, they're exactly what they said they are. They, they tell the limits of your machines. And um, I'm going to go ahead and home mine again. i got to do reset. Let's see here. Home. It is very nice to have the limit switches. It is a um, pain when you hit one. 
but it's very nice to have them because of the homing. So you can always come back to where you were with your projects. I want to show you when this is done, I'll show you something else also. Like I said, the um, when I had the one reset there, it, I had to actually power the unit off there and unplug it. Still didn't work. I had to close the software and reopen the software, which is which is a headache when you hit the limit switches. So um, I'm going to jog the controller. I'm going to say four inches up. Same thing. When this gets down that end, it's going to hit that limit switch. So you want to definitely be careful of that. Um, and left and right. So I think I pretty much covered it. I hope everybody understands what the limit switches are for. Another thing, don't forget you have limit switches on your Z-axis. So if you have a super long bit in here, and that's another key thing, think about this for a second. If you have a super long bit in here and um, you, let's say, so for example, right now this is pretty much maxed where it's at. Because remember it went up, it, um, it homed, and then it just came off of the limit switch. So the limit switch right now is um, right at right where it's supposed to be. So if you put a bit in here and you put a piece of wood, for example, think about this as well. Here's, I'm glad I thought of this to show you. If, if you put a piece of wood in here, I'm going to turn this off. Remember, this is right where the limit switch was after it hummed. If you put a piece of wood in here, and you put your bit in here, and it's down to here, you know, keep in mind, you don't want to move your, you don't want to um, lift this up, or, you know, I um, can't think of the word, you know, move it up, put something under it. Because what's going to happen is, especially in easel, is right when you start, you know, it assumes your bit is right on the board, which most of the time is. So it wants to lift up a little bit. So if it lifts up, it's going to immediately engage the limit switch. So the other thing is, is if you come down, let's just say you come down a little bit, and you're like, oh, well, I'm not near that, whatever, and you go to do that, and then all of a sudden, you know, easel lifts up. Actually, I think most of them do. Easel lifts up to move over. Well, same thing. It could engage the limit switch. So you have to keep that in mind. And believe it or not, if I hit a limit switch anywhere, it's almost always on my z-axis because I'm always very careful here left and right I always know not to go that far and a lot of times before I run my my um, before I run my cut I'll tell the software to move the spindle over to the top left corner just to make sure that I can go because I don't want the headache of hitting the limit switch however if I hit it anywhere it's on this because it either goes up too high or too low now sometimes I actually just did a 3D carve on the silverback and what I didn't pay attention to was is I was worried about going too high. So I'm like here in the middle, this is great, no problem, put my machine, or put my board, put this here. Well by the time it was done cutting down into my 3D, it hit my lower limit switch and it was, I would have to say, probably 80% through the carve and I was so upset. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I had to start over because I didn't really think about it, how low it was going to go for that. So I guess what I want you to understand is the limit switches can, uh, they can be your best friend and they can be not your friend. So um, just pay attention to them. If your machine stops abruptly for whatever reason, um, take note of where your spindle's at. Take note of where your X and your Y is. Um, you did not hit a limit switch. Um, I have seen faulty limit switches in the past. Um, if you feel that you know, you're going and going and it just keeps stopping for some reason. Kind of take note, if it stops, do you get an alarm on your screen? If you get a limit alarm, then for some reason the machine thinks that it hit a limit switch. If it did hit a limit switch, you know, you just look and see and it did hit it, well then start over or whatever, you know, just note that for yourself. If it did not hit a limit switch, it's like in the middle here, and then there could be a loose wire or something like that, you know, check the connections and things like that. But um, again, the uh, limit switches are exactly what they sound like, limits, and um, you know, just kind of pay attention to them and then they'll probably be, uh, be your friend, hopefully, so. I hope that covers everything. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. 
Um, again, before you know you you need to reach out to support or anything, just double check when it stops. Um, the key thing is to check your uh, machine. Is it in an alarm state? Do you have to unlock it? If it is, it thinks it hit it, and then look at your machine and did it actually hit it? You know, and so uh, just kind of go from there. So that's it. I would uh, and and it wouldn't hurt to just jog your machine around and hit a limit switch. Just do it, just for no reason, just like I just did it. Push your reset, unlock, get familiar with getting out of that problem. Just get familiar, like me, I could just pop right out of it now. Not happy, but I could pop out of it. So, um, you know, wouldn't hurt to just hit them here and there and get used to what you have to do two times. Remember that, two times you have to do it because it's gonna be pressed, and then once you reset it, it has to do it again. So. Um, Practice doing it and uh, hopefully that'll help. If you have any questions, let me know.